So this is gamma mvi over times c. That's that c. We'll put it there. And then over the time component of the momentum, which is there's a gamma i m c here, and there's an, a capital M c here. So it's gamma m gamma i. This is a gamma i m c plus capital M C. Good. Now, if I can simplify this a little bit, because I can take out the C's, and I get that this is gamma M, gamma I M V I over gamma I M plus M. Can, uh, is that visible on the screen? Just barely visible at the bottom of the screen. Here, this is the solution for the final velocity. It's gamma mv over gamma m plus m. Now, what was it in the relativistic, the non-relativistic case? In the non-relativistic case, see if my orange marker works. Ah, it does sort of. It was mvi over mvi over m, sorry, over m plus m. This was the non-relativistic case. The non-relativistic case was that it is, it was the original momentum over the total mass. <coughs> and here, it's the original momentum, <coughs> which is now a relativistic expression, over something slightly different from the total mass. Something bigger than the total mass. That is, the final velocity here is slightly different from the final velocity we got in the non-relativistic case, but notice that if we take the limit that gamma goes to 1, or the velocity is small, in the limit that gamma goes to 1, this becomes exactly the same as the non-relativistic expression. So the relativistic and non-relativistic expressions become the same in the low speed limit. That's important and that's correct. But then, if we think about higher speeds, so relativistic speeds, this gamma factor becomes large. And notice that if gamma gets very large, imagine gamma was thousands, then gamma m would be bigger than capital M, and then this expression would approach just the velocity vi, which you notice if gamma is very large, vi will approach the speed of light. So that, what is this saying? This is saying that if the bullet comes in close to the speed of light, if it comes in very close to the speed of light, then the combined object that, of the bullet lodged in the block will end up moving close to the speed of light. Of course, if you had a real bullet going close to the speed of light hitting a block, there would be a massive explosion of unimaginable magnitude. So that's not exactly what would happen. So what you really have to think about this is not a real bullet and a real block, but you should think about this as, a, as you know, an electron and a proton creating some new particle or something like that. Think of it as my subatomic particles making a new subatomic particle. In that case, the new subatomic particle, if one of the particles is coming in close to the speed of light, the combined particle that is created by the collision will end up moving close to the speed of light. Because if you're close to the speed of light, these gammas become large, then this gamma m beats the m, and then this just becomes 1 times the initial velocity, which is close to the speed of light. Okay, so so uh, we've both shown that in the slow speed limit we recover the non-relativistic case, and in the high speed limit the, the uh, the velocity of the final product is higher than you would expect from the uh, non-relativistic case. Okay, good. Now let's look at what is the mass, the final mass of this object. I've warned you that the final mass of this object will not be m plus m, but it will be larger than m plus m. Let's check that. Okay, so now we're going to use we're going to use this expression here for the mass. The mass is just the time component squared minus the space component squared over c squared. So the final mass, final, ma the final mass squared will be the time component, which is the sum of these two squared, 
M C. Uh, sorry, I read that wrong. It's M, the sum of those two things, M C plus gamma I M C squared minus the space component, Px, which is this plus zero, gamma mv plus zero, gamma i m v i squared, all over c squared. Um, and now we're going to do a whole bunch of horrendous math. Oh, look, that's come slightly off the edge of the screen. Let me just adjust the screen there to get it in. Um, and now we're going to do a bunch of horrendous math to simplify this and compare it to the non-relativistic result. Okay, so there's going to be some crazy math. Here we go. It's all straightforward algebra, but there's a lot of it. If you get confused, pause the video and try and recover where I am, because I'll move pretty quickly here since you have the video control. You can uh, slow things down if you need to. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to expand this square so first I'm going to expand the square. So I'm going to pull out my 1 over c squared up front. And now I'm going to expand this square. This square becomes an m squared c squared. And then it's a plus 2 gamma i m m uh, yeah, m m c squared. And then it's going to be plus a gamma i squared m squared c squared, and then it's minus this terrible thing, which is a gamma i squared m squared v i squared. Okay, now, uh, first simplification is a physics simplification, which is this, this object right here is just the t component squared minus the x component squared of a four momentum, a four momentum for the bullet. So this is just going to, this, uh, this uh, subtraction here is just going to give m squared c squared of the original bullet. That's the mass of the original bullet. There I'm using, this is the invariant, uh, the invariant for the four momentum here of the original bullet. So that's very simple. Um, so notice this is going to look something like a complete square here. So this is going to look like 1 over c. Actually, look, I can take out my c squareds, too. I can take out the c squareds. Well, I shouldn't do that. I should do that solution. Okay? So this is going to look like m squared plus 2 gamma i m m plus m squared. Okay, that's a capital M. That's a little m. Okay, now I'm going to complete the square again. I think it's still the right thing to do to complete the square again. So now I'm going to have to start to erase to make some space. So I'm going to complete the square again now. And I think I'm going to have, this will be look like this. m squared. Oh, in fact, even better. I'll write it like this. m plus m squared. This is not quite the right term to be in the middle of m plus m squared, so then to complete the square in the old school thing, I have to then add, uh, I have to pull this out, and I also have to pull out what I would replace this with to make this a perfect square. So that's going to be a, uh, uh, well let's just pull this part out first, 2 gamma i m m. And then I have to take out the part that completed this square, which is a 2m m. See, this is the thing that I was lacking inside here to make this m squared plus m squared equal m plus m squared. It's completing the square. Bad? Yes, it's ugly. But it's not terrible. Um, and this part here is 2 gamma i minus 1 m m. So that's looking useful in some way. 
Okay, now, I'm going to now do a horrendous set of simplification, and when I do this, we're going to have something that looks very much like the non-relativistic results.